So you want to learn to code, but you don't know where to start. We're here to tell you that it can be child's play. Now I don't code for a living, but I consider myself these days proficient in many programming languages. Whether it be an Arduino project or doing a website or app, I'm comfortable jumping between different languages and achieving what I set out for. The reason I'm telling you this is because I'm completely self-taught. And where did I start? With a little program called Scratch. Scratch is a piece of software developed by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. It was created by them to teach children how to code without actually needing to write any language. It was my first step into the programming world and I'm very grateful for the education it gave me. I learned it so I could then teach to a classroom full of children, but the results have been the foundation upon which all my other programming knowledge has come. If you're a student age, then you should jump right in. But if you're an adult and you're just too embarrassed to delve into something designed for children, well, here's five reasons why it's still worth a go. All important coding concepts are included. The number one reason that Scratch is great to learn with is that even though it's designed for kids, it includes all of the concepts you'll use later in your programming career. Not only can your code be sequential, but it also can be event driven. Scratch includes variables, loops, arrays, and all of the other important bits. In recent years, it's been updated to include object oriented programming, which means you can have instances and variations within that. This will teach you how to code efficiently and set you up for much more complicated programming languages later on. Scratch is free and doesn't require installation. By creating a free account, you can get started within minutes. It doesn't matter if you're on Windows, Linux or Mac, anything with a web browser will work. This makes it ideal for introducing into the classroom. You don't have to spend any time installing software or worry about the compatibility of your students' devices. This also makes it easy for parents to install for their kids at home and even for them to have a go themselves. Scratch is very easy to get started for beginners. It features a drag and drop interface and it has tooltips when you hover the mouse over anything. All of the different types of codes have different outlines and shapes, which means they only slot together in a certain way. If you want to find out what something does, hover over the mouse and then drag it out into the programming area and test to see what happens. Trial and error is extremely easy and makes progressing quickly very realistic. There's many free tutorials online and the Scratch documentation is also really good. Scratch has a very active community where you can reverse engineer other projects that you like. You can spend hours browsing through the Scratch galleries and collections until you find something you really like and then open it up and see how it works. Admittedly, a lot of these projects are quite superficial and simple, but every now and again you come across a real gem and you can learn a lot by going inside the code, poking around and seeing how they achieved it. If you're trying to make something of a specific genre, you can search for that, look inside and get a head start on your own project. If you find a project you really like but you think something could be slightly improved, make the changes and then remix it and get feedback from the rest of the community. The system works really, really well. Scratch is expandable and moddable. Scratch is not simply limited to 2D games on your computer. You can connect physical hardware and control it via the same drag and drop interface. Any user is welcome to make their own mod and distribute it and share it with others. This means you can make your own mod to go with whatever specialist hardware that you're working with. A good example of this is using it to control robotics, such as the Vorpal Hexapod. Now you might be thinking there's a limitation in Scratch in which it can only work in 2D. Well to that I'd say you've got to walk before you can run. If you can develop a really broad range of skills in Scratch, you'll be ready to step up to something more complicated and take your work to the next level. When I was first learning to code, I would constantly challenge myself to see if I could solve problems inside what I thought was Scratch's limitations. I would pick a feature or genre of game and then try and recreate that in Scratch as best as I could. Here is some footage from one of the more complicated games I made when I was learning to code. This game is divided into two halves. In the first half, you create a track for your car to race on. I imported about 10 different sprites and then set up keyboard and mouse controls so you could rotate them, move them around and stamp them into place. There's also features to erase if you make a mistake. When your track is done, you place the finish line and that brings you to the second mode of the game, racing the car. This game has physics for accelerating, decelerating and steering. If you run off the track, you lose speed. If you run into the sand, you practically stop. There's also a lap timer which keeps track of your best lap and I even managed to adapt Scratch's sound effects to create somewhat of an engine noise. If you're starting out and you think this is too easy for you, then I suggest maybe you're not a beginner after all. The problem solving and creative mindset I learned from Scratch is still with me today. Every time I take on a new complicated project or try and learn a new programming language, I know that if I keep going, I'll be able to find my way through no matter how hard it seems at the beginning. 
Well, I hope I've convinced you to get started with Scratch. Please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on my full series of tutorials coming up. I'll not only cover the basics, but then I'll switch to specific functions you might want to include in your game. After that, I'll jump into great detail. I'm going to try and recreate some of my favourite games available for Android and Apple. I hope you're excited about learning to code with me and Scratch. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.